Hey guys, this is John with Parkinson's Standard Tutoring. In this video, I'm going to explain Newman projections and their importance for looking at configurations and visualizing a molecule, okay? So Newman projections uh, analyze the conformational differences in a molecule, and they do that two ways. One, they're looking at a bond rotating relative to another, okay? So one bond rotating at a time. And two, they're going to look at 3D configurations by projecting a um, two-dimensional bond and then looking at the relative uh, locations of atoms and groups attached around that bond, okay? So it's a visual uh, thing, so let's look at an example so we can visualize how we go from a structure to drawing out the Newman projection of it, okay? So a Newman projection looks down a carbon-carbon bond, okay? And then you're going to uh, localize the uh, atoms and the groups attached to the bond by um, 60 degrees uh, increments around the Newman projection, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to draw the structure out in a kind of circle diagram that indicates that it's a Newman projection, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is, since it's a carbon-carbon bond we're looking down, okay, and it's not just any carbon-carbon bond, these carbons have to be sp3 hybridized, so tetrahedral, okay? So the first thing we do is we draw out the um, initial carbon as a circle of the dot, and then we draw the back carbon as a circle around it, okay? So what I have here is a molecular model that is useful, especially with Newman projections, because it's all 3D and it's hard to visualize on a, a two-dimensional board, okay? So our molecule here is uh, two carbons, right? And that's the bond we're gonna be looking down, okay? And we have two substituents, a chlorine and a um, alcohol, okay? So if this is in space here, it's really organized like this. And what the Newman does is instead of looking at it head on, you're actually gonna be looking down this bond, okay? So you're really rotating it this way, I'm looking down the carbon-carbon bond so you can see the uh, locations of all the groups around the bonds, okay? So the way you do that is you can either look left to right down the carbon bond or right to left, okay? The default is usually just left to right, and the way you indicate that is by drawing out the eye here. That means we're looking down this carbon-carbon bond left to right, okay? And so what we need to take into account is things that, because uh, it's three-dimensional, we need to take into account the dashes and the wedges and make sure they're in the right place on the Newman projection, okay? So we've written out our two carbons, the front carbon, the back carbon is the big circle. Now we need to draw out everything that's attached to these carbons. So the first thing we do is we draw the, the chlorine, which is drawn up, and then we draw the um, alcohol, so that's in the back carbon, it's just down like that, all right? We're gonna finish off the front carbon first and then move to the back one. So we have the same um, groups attached, just two hydrogens, but we need to just know, just for future reference, because you know, harder examples will indicate things besides hydrogen, okay? So since we're looking at a head-on, the way to visualize is to pretend like you're in the board, in the plane of the board, okay? And things that were wedged are now going to be on the right of your um, eye. So looking down this way, so things that were wedged coming out are now going to be to the right, okay? So we're going to draw out the two groups here. Both are hydrogens, but they're different, okay? We'll say this is H1, this is H2. So we need to indicate H1 and H2. Just so we know that things that are wedged is going to be on the right of that carbon, okay? Also put the chlorine up top. And then we're going to finish off the back atom by putting the two hydrogens also in the air like this. Okay, so you'll notice that looking left to right, things that were wedged become to the, on the right of this Newman projection. If we were to look, you know, right to left, that would be switched, okay? So don't make the generalization that everything that is wedged is on the right of the Newman projection because it's not always the case. So because these are sigma bonds and they're freely rotating, in theory we have 360 degrees of rotation, okay? So we can actually have six different conformers, all right? Um, by going through 60 degrees increments, we can find that there are six different Newman projections, all right? And you can categorize those um, in two different categories, okay? So three of these conformers will be what they call staggered, okay? That's what, that's what I just threw out here. Everything is equally spaced, all right? Um, they look like they're 60 degrees apart. In reality, side note here, because they're tetrahedral, these look like they're 120 degree angles, but in reality, they're 109.5, okay? Remember that tetrahedral atoms to be evenly spaced these uh, degree angles, 109.5, okay? Vesper theory, so if you need a refresher on Vesper, please see a previous video on the Vesper uh, theory about how um, electron repulsion indicates that 109.5 degrees must be present for tetrahedral. All right, the, uh, the second category is eclipse, okay? That's what happens in the first um, thing that you rotate, okay? That's what you get when the atoms are directly behind each other, okay? They're called peaking over each other, all right? So to go through all these conformers, what we do is just imagine turning this front carbon like a wheel, okay? We're gonna turn it 360 degrees and go through six conformers, okay? So that's what I've drawn out here. If we do this uh, the first way, 60 degrees, and move this front carbon, okay? The chlorine's gonna end up um, to the right here, okay? Everything's just shifted 60 degrees to the right. And you can do that for everything, all right? So what I have in blue, these are the staggered configurations, okay? Everything's staggered. 
sacred here, here, and here. And you'll notice they're all equally spaced. The black ones, these are the eclipse ones, okay? They're all peaking over each other. These are the unstable ones. So just remember, staggered is stable. Eclipses are unstable, okay? So what you can do with this is you can write out an energy diagram and see how stable they are relative to each other, right? So that's what I've drawn out here. Now, all the staggered ones, they're always going to be more stable than any eclipse, okay? So that's what's indicated here. Now, the energy diagram shows you how stable it is because you need less energy to get to that stable state than you do for an um, unstable one, okay? So the first one I drew out there, this first staggered, this is the most stable one, okay? Because that's less energy to get to. Now, what makes it more stable is you have two more, like, uh, configurations that are actually part of the staggered category, okay? They call anti and gouge. So what I've drawn out here, uh, oops, I forgot the OH, but anti is when the two groups are completely anti, anti to each other, okay? 180 degrees apart. Gouge is what happens in the other staggered configuration when they're next to each other. So notice the difference, right? The chlorine, the two substituents, are anti to each other. Here, they are next to each other. This is gouge, this is anti. Things that are anti, more stable, okay? Things that are gouge, Less stable, but still more stable than eclipsed, okay? Just remember that anything staggered is always going to be more stable than eclipsed, okay? So in our first staggered, we have anti. Our second staggered, we have gouge. And our third staggered, we also have gouge, okay? So if we look at our energy diagram, we have our first staggered, anti, so it has the least energy to get to there. It's the most stable. Our two other staggered, they're the same energy because they're both gouge, okay? There's really no way to distinguish which one is more stable than the other. Now for the eclipsed, our first eclipsed here, this is kind of um, the best eclipse in the sense that they're not, the OH and the CL are not right on top of each other. That's what happens in our second eclipse, okay? This is the most unstable eclipse, and that's indicated by the highest energy here. That's because the CL and the OH are right on top of each other, all right? And because they're eclipsed, that makes it even more unstable, okay? Very, you need a lot of energy to get to that state. The last eclipse there is kind of the same as this one. There's no way to distinguish which one is better because both of them are next to each other like that. But yet again, because they're peaking over each other, still eclipsed, still unstable, okay? So from these six conformers here, you always have six based on Newman projection because of the 360 degrees of rotation, okay? You can get the six conformers and label them as staggered eclipse, and then with the energy diagram, you can see just how stable they are relative to each other, okay? So Newman projection is very useful for visualizing things in three dimensions, okay? In conjunction with the next video, which is chairs, you'll see that you can use um, on two dimensions, actually visualize three three-dimensional things very equally, okay? Thank you for tuning in.